The Jewish left consists of Jews who identify with, or support, left-wing or liberal causes, consciously as Jews, either as individuals or through organizations. There is no one organization or movement which constitutes the Jewish left, however. Jews have been major forces in the history of the labor movement, the settlement house movement, the women's rights movement, anti-racist work, and anti-fascist and anti-capitalist organizations of many forms in Europe, the United States and modern-day Israel. Jews have a rich history of involvement in anarchism, socialism, Marxism, and Western liberalism. Although the expression, "'On the left' covers a range of politics, many well-known figures, "'On the left' have been of Jews who were born into Jewish families and have various degrees of connection to Jewish communities, Jewish culture, Jewish tradition, or the Jewish religion in its many variants. History Jewish leftism has its philosophic roots in the Jewish Enlightenment, or Haskalah, led by thinkers such as Moses Mendelssohn, as well as the support of many European Jews such as Ludwig Born for republican ideals in the aftermath of the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars. In the 18th and 19th centuries, a movement for Jewish emancipation spread across Europe, strongly associated with the emergence of political liberalism, based on the Enlightenment principles of rights and equality under the law. Because liberals represented the political left of the time see left-right politics, emancipated Jews, as they entered the political culture of the nations where they lived, became closely associated with liberal parties. Thus, many Jews supported the American Revolution of 1776, the French Revolution of 1789, and the European Revolutions of 1848, while Jews in England tended to vote for the Liberal Party, which had led the parliamentary struggle for Jewish emancipation an arrangement called by some scholars, "...the liberal Jewish compromise". The emergence of a Jewish working class In the age of industrialization in the late 19th century, a Jewish working class emerged in the cities of Eastern and Central Europe. Before long, a Jewish labor movement emerged too. The Jewish Labor Bund General Jewish Labor Union was formed in Lithuania, Poland, and Russia in 1897. Distinctive Jewish socialist organizations formed and spread across the Jewish Pale of Settlement in the Russian Empire. There were also a significant number of people of Jewish origin who did not explicitly identify as Jews per se, but were active in anarchist, socialist, and social democratic as well as communist organizations, movements, and parties. As Zionism grew in strength as a political movement, socialist Zionist parties were formed, such as Ber Borachov's Pol Zion. There were non-Zionist left-wing forms of Jewish nationalism, such as territorialism which called for a Jewish national homeland, but not necessarily in Palestine, autonomism which called for non-territorial national rights for Jews in multinational empires, and the folkism, advocated by Simon Dubno, which celebrated the Jewish culture of the Yiddish-speaking masses. As Eastern European Jews migrated west from the 1880s, these ideologies took root in growing Jewish communities, such as London's East End, Paris's Pletzel, New York City's Lower East Side, and Buenos Aires. There was a lively Jewish anarchist scene in London, a central figure of which was, the non-Jewish German thinker and writer Rudolf Rocker. The important Jewish socialist movement in the United States, with its Yiddish language daily, the forward, and trade unions such as the International Ladies Garment Workers Union and the Amalgamated Clothing Workers. Important figures in these milieu included Rose Schneiderman, Abraham Cahan, Morris Winchevsky, and David Dubinsky. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Jews played a major role in the Social Democratic Parties of Germany, Russia, Austria-Hungary, and Poland. Historian Enzo Traverso has used the term, "...Judeo-Marxism", to describe the innovative forms of Marxism associated with these Jewish socialists. These ranged from strongly cosmopolitan positions hostile to all forms of nationalism as with Rosa Luxemburg and, to a lesser extent, Leon Trotsky to positions more sympathetic to cultural nationalism as with the Ostromarxists or Vladimir Medem. In Soviets and against fascism 
As with the American Revolution of 1776, the French Revolution of 1789, and the German Revolution of 1848, many Jews worldwide welcomed the Russian Revolution of 1917, celebrating the fall of a regime that had presided over anti-Semitic pogroms, and believing that the new order in what was to become the Soviet Union would bring improvements in the situation of Jews in those lands. Many Jews became involved in communist parties, constituting large proportions of their membership in many countries, including Great Britain and the US. There were specifically Jewish sections of many communist parties, such as the Yevsektsia in the Soviet Union. The communist regime in the USSR pursued what could be characterized as ambivalent policies towards Jews and Jewish culture, at times supporting their development as a national culture e.g., sponsoring significant Yiddish-language scholarship and creating an autonomous Jewish territory in Borobidzon, at times pursuing anti-Semitic purges, such as that in the wake of the so-called Doctors' Plot, see also Combs it, with the advent of fascism in parts of Europe in the 1920s and 1930s, many Jews responded by becoming actively involved in the left, and particularly the communist parties, which were at the forefront of the anti-fascist movement. For example, many Jewish volunteers fought in the international brigades in the Spanish Civil War for instance in the American Abraham Lincoln Brigade and in the Polish Jewish Naftali Botwin Company. Jews and leftists fought Oswald Mosley's British fascists at the Battle of Cable Street. This mass movement was influenced by the Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee in the Soviet Union. In World War II, the Jewish left played a major part in resistance to Nazism. For example, Bundists and left Zionists were key in Zydowska Organizatia Bojoa and the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. <laughs> <laughs> Radical Jews in Central and Western Europe As well as the movements rooted in the Jewish working class, relatively assimilated middle-class Jews in Central and Western Europe began to search for sources of radicalism in Jewish tradition. For example, Martin Buber drew on Hasidism in articulating his anarchist philosophy, Gershom Sholem was an anarchist and a Kabbalah scholar, Walter Benjamin was equally influenced by Marxism and Jewish messianism, Gustav Landauer was a religious Jew and a libertarian communist, Jacob Israel Dehan combined socialism with Haredi Judaism, while left libertarian Bernard Lazare became a passionately Jewish Zionist in 1897, but wrote two years later to Herzl, and by extension to the Zionist Action Committee. You are bourgeois in thoughts, bourgeois in your feelings, bourgeois in your ideas, bourgeois in your conception of society." In Weimar Germany, Walther Rathenau was a leading figure of the Jewish left. <laughs> Socialist Zionism and the Israeli left In the 20th century, especially after the Second Aliyah, socialist Zionism, first developed in Russia by the Marxist Ber Borachov and the non-Marxists Nachman Sirkin and A. D. Gordon, became a powerful force in the Yishuv, the Jewish settlement in Palestine. Pol Zion, the Histadrit Labor Union and the Mapai Party played a major part in the campaign for an Israeli state, with socialist politicians like David Ben-Gurion and Golda Meir amongst the founders of the nation. At the same time, the kibbutz movement was an experiment in practical socialism. In the 1940s, many on the left advocated a binational state in Israel, Palestine, rather than an exclusively Jewish state. This position was taken by Hannah Arendt and Martin Buber, for example. Since independence in 1948, there has been a lively Israeli left, both Zionist the Labour Party, Meretz, and anti-Zionist Palestine Communist Party, Maki. The Labour Party and its predecessors have been in power in Israel for significant periods since 1948. There are two worldwide groupings of left-wing Zionist organizations. The World Labour Zionist Movement, associated with the Labour Zionist tendency, is a loose association, including Avoda, Habanum Dror, Histadrit and Naamat. The World Union of Merits, associated with what was historically known as the Socialist Zionist Tendency, is a loose association of the Israeli Merits Party, the Hashomer Hatzair Socialist Zionist Youth Movement, the Kibbutz Artzi Federation and the Gavat Haviva Research and Study Center. Both movements exist as factions within the World Zionist Organization, as well as regional or country specific Zionist movements. The two roughly correspond to the interwar split between the Pole Zion right the tradition that led to Avoda and the Pole Zion left. Hashomer Hatzair, Mapam, Meretz. Apartheid South Africa 
South Africa's Jewish left-wing was heavily involved in left-wing causes such as the anti-apartheid movement. The most famous member of the anti-apartheid Jewish left-wing was Helen Suzman, DBE. There were also several liberal left-wing Jewish defendants in the Ravonia trial, Joe Slovo, Dennis Goldberg, Lionel Bernstein, Bob Heppel, Arthur Goldrick, Harold Wolpe, and James Contour. <laughs> Contemporary Jewish left 1960s–1990s to 1990s. As the Jewish working class died out in the years after the Second World War, its institutions and political movements did too. The Arbiter Ring in England, for example, came to an end in the 1950s and Jewish trade unionism in the U.S. ceased to be a major force at that time. There are, however, still some remnants of the Jewish working class organizations left today, including the Workmen's Circle, Jewish Labor Committee, and the Forward newspaper in New York, the International Jewish Labor Bund in Australia, and the United Jewish People's Order in Canada. The 1960s to 1980s saw a renewal of interest among Western Jews in Jewish working class culture and the various radical traditions of the Jewish past. This led to the growth of a new sort of radical Jewish organization that was both interested in Yiddish culture, Jewish spirituality, and social justice. In the U.S., for example, between 1980–1992, New Jewish Agenda functioned as a national, multi-issue progressive membership organization with the mission of acting as a "...Jewish voice on the left and a left voice in the Jewish community." In 1991, Jews for Racial and Economic Justice formed to fight for equitable distribution of economic and cultural resources and political power", in New York City. And in 1999, leftists broke from the LA chapter of the American Jewish Congress to form the Progressive Jewish Alliance. In Britain, the Jewish Socialists Group and Rabbi Michael Lerner's Tikkun have similarly continued this tradition, while more recently groups like Judas have taken an even more eclectic and radical approach to Jewishness. In Belgium, the Union des Progressistes Juifs de Belgique is, since 1969, the heir of the Jewish Communist and Bundist Solidarité movement in the Belgian resistance, embracing the Israeli refuseniks cause as well as of the undocumented immigrants in Belgium. 2000s present During the first decade of the 2000s, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict became a defining element in the composition of the diasporic Jewish left. A new wave of Jewish organizations formed to support Palestinian causes. Groups such as Jewish Voice for Peace, Independent Jewish Voices Canada, Independent Jewish Voices UK, and the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network gave renewed voice to Jewish anti-Zionism. This perspective continues to be reflected in media outlets such as Mondawise and the Trafe podcast. Following the 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict, many leftist Jewish organizations in the U.S. and Canada focused on directly challenging establishment Jewish organizations such as the Jewish Federation, American Israel Public Affairs Committee, the Anti-Defamation League, and Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, for their support for Israel's actions during the conflict. In the U.S., this intra-community conflict expanded to domestic politics following the United States presidential election, 2016. Groups such as If Not Now, Jewish Voice for Peace, and Jews for Racial and Economic Justice began organizing under the banner of hashtag Jewish resistance to "...challenge institutional Jewish support for the Trump administration and affiliated white nationalists." According to exit polls, 71% of American Jews voted Democrat during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Over the last decade, the Jewish vote has gone to Democrats by 76–80% in each election. A large majority of American Jews also report feeling somewhat or very attached to Israel. <laughs> Contemporary Israeli left Operating in a parliamentary governmental system based on proportional representation, left-wing political parties and blocs in Israel have been able to elect members of the Knesset with varying degrees of success. Over time, those parties have evolved, with some merging, others disappearing, and new parties arising. Israeli left-wing parties have included Hadish Mapam Meretz Yahad Havoda Mimid Progressive List for Peace Rats 
Left Camp of Israel Holam Haza, Koa Hadash Notable figures in these parties have included Mayor Vilner, Shulamit Alani, Uri Avnari, Yossi Bailan, Rand Cohen, Mahdi Peld, Amon Rubinstein, and Yossi Sarad. <laughs> British Jewish Left British Jews have been influential in the left-wing politics of the United Kingdom for many years, especially in the main Social Democratic, Socialist Party, the Labour Party, but also in the socially liberal Liberal Democrats. During the years when the Liberal Party was Britain's main party of the left, two Jews in particular attained high office, Herbert Samuel, who led the Liberal Party from 1930 to 1935, and Rufus Isaacs, the only British Jew to have been created a Marquess. Other notable liberal Jews of the 1800s and early 1900s included, Lionel de Rothschild, the first Jew to serve as an MP, Sir David Salomons, Sir Francis Goldsmith, Sir George Jessel, Arthur Cohen, the Lord Swadling, Sir Edward Sassoon, the Lord Hor Belisha Edwin Samuel Montagu, Ignaz Trebich Lincoln, and the Lord Wandsworth. In the early part of the 20th century, the Liberal Party gave way to the more radical and socialist Labour Party. Leonard Wolf and Hugh Franklin were among the figures influential in the early Labour Party, and Jewish MPs like Barnett Janner, Sir Percy Harris, and the Lord Nathan were among the radical Liberal MPs, many of whom switched from Liberal to Labour. Economists like Harold Losky and Nicholas Kaldor, and intellectuals like Victor Gollinch and Karl Mannheim provided the intellectual impetus for British socialism to take hold. Prominent early Labour MPs included the Lord Silken, who became a minister in Clement Attlee's government, Sidney Silverman, who abolished capital punishment in Britain, and the Lord Shinwell, one of the leaders of Red Clydeside who later became Secretary of State for War. At the end of the Second World War, the Labour Party entered government again, and several newly elected Labour MPs were Jewish, and often on the socialist left of the party, radicalised by incidents like the Battle of Cable Street. Those MPs included Herschel Lewis Austin, Maurice Edelman, and Ian McCardo, as well as Phil Pyroton, one of only four MPs in British history to have represented the Communist Party of Great Britain. Several MPs elected in the 1940s and 1950s went on to be ministers in Harold Wilson's governments of the 1960s and 1970s, the Lord Barnett, Edmund Dell, John Diamond, Reg Friesen, the Baroness Gateskill, Maya Galpern, Gerald Kaufman, the Lord Lever of Manchester, Paul Rose, the Lord Siegel, the Baroness Sirota, the Lord Sheldon, John and Samuel Silken, Barnett Strauss, and David Weitzman. A prominent Jewish labor politician in this era was Leo Abse, who put forward the Private Members' Bill which decriminalized homosexuality and reformed the divorce laws in Britain. Robert Maxwell, a Labour MP during the 1964–66 Wilson government, eventually became a leading newspaper publisher when his holding company purchased Mirror Group newspapers in 1984. In the 1970s and 1980s, the Labour Party experienced significant turbulence with the rise of the Entriest Militant Tendency a Trotskyist group led by Ted Grant, and the centre-left Social Democratic Party SDP breaking away and forming an alliance with the Liberal Party who had two Jewish MPs, the Lord Carlisle of Beru and Clement Freud, later to unite as the Liberal Democrats. One such parliamentary defector to the SDP was Neville Sandelson, and the Keynesian economist the Lord Skidelsky also defected. Those Jewish Labour MPs who stuck with the party included Harry Cohen, Alf Dubbs, Millie Miller, Eric Moonman, and David Winnick. During the late 1980s and 1990s, with the shift away from the socialist left of the party, and during Tony Blair's leadership of the Labour Party, notable senior Jewish politicians included Peter Mandelson, one of the architects of New Labour", Peter Goldsmith, Baron Goldsmith, the Lord Beecham, and the Lord Gould of Brookwood. Mandelson, party fundraiser the Lord Levy and Jack Straw who is of partial Jewish ancestry, were accused by Tam Daliel, MP, of being a "'cabal of Jewish advisers around Blair. Several of Blair's ministers and Labour backbenchers were Jewish or partially Jewish, including Barbara Roche, Dame Margaret Hodge, Fabian Hamilton, Louise Elman, the Baroness Heyman, the Baroness King of Beau, and Gillian Marin. Labour donors during the 1990s and 2000s who were Jewish included David Abrahams, the Lord Bernstein of Craigweil, Richard Caring, Sir Trevor Chin, Sir David Garrard, the Lord Gavron, Sir Emmanuel Kay, Andrew Rosenfeld, the Lord Sainsbury of Turville, and Barry Townsley. Several of these were caught up in the Cash for Honours scandal. 
Under the government of Blair's successor, Gordon Brown, brothers David Miliband and Ed Miliband became members of the cabinet. Their father was the Marxist academic Ralph Miliband. The brothers differed in their view of the party's future direction, and they fought a bitter leadership election against each other in 2010. Ed Miliband won the election and became the first Jewish leader of the Labour Party. One of Miliband's shadow cabinet members, Ivan Lewis, as well as advisers David Axelrod, Arne Graf, and the Lord Glassman are all Jewish. Current Jewish labor politicians include, William Bach, the Lord Bassam of Brighton, Luciana Berger, Michael Cashman, the Lord Grabener, Ruth Hennig, the Lord Kessenbaum, Jonathan Mendelssohn, Janet Neal Cohen, Meta Ramsey, Catherine Stiller, Andrew Stone, Alan Sugar, Leslie Turnberg, and Robert Winston. Since the foundation of the Liberal Democrats, several Jews have achieved prominence, David Alliance, the aforementioned Alex Carlyle, Miranda Green, Ali Grender, Sally Hamwee, Evan Harris, Susan Kramer, Anthony Lester, Jonathan Marks, Julia Neuberger, Monroe Palmer, Paul Strasberger, and Lynn Featherstone, who became a minister in the coalition government 2010–15. See also Topic References Topic External Links Jews and the Workers Movement Marxist Internet Archive Yiddish language sections of American Socialist Parties Marxist Internet Archive Jewish Left Wing Community Faith and Socialism Commission of the Socialist Party USA